Hey, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Natalie. Today's video, I show you how to add visibility dynamic conditions to any Elementor section or widget adding conditional logic to show or hide different elements. You can set multiple display conditions. If the condition value is met, you can show or hide the element. It's really up to you. This is dynamically generated, which means you only have to set it once. You need Elementor Pro and dynamic content for Elementor add-on. In my WordPress dashboard, I want to make an online restaurant survey form to get general feedback. I will use the mouse over event, which means it's executed when the user points or moves the cursor onto the element or one of its child elements. When the user mouse over the bottom, the form is triggered and displayed for the user to fill in. I demonstrate the, these in my About page, but you can set it any page you want to. Head over to the Page tabs and then click on the About, about Us page to open up in the Elementor Editor. This is my restaurant page. I start on at the bottom. I click on the plus icon to add your element, Elementor main section. In the advanced tab, I adjust some padding settings so I get more space around the element. I search now for the form widget, which is part of Elementor Pro, and I drag it inside the Elementor Editor, where I quickly want to do is to add the background color, so I click on the six Elementor blue dots to add the Elementor section, and within the Style tab, I click on the background color and to add the light gray color. There you go! Then I select the form widget by clicking on the little pencil icon to begin with the necessary form fields for my restaurant form users. The form fields, I will use two radio fields, so I get two direct replies from them. I click on the bottom to change the text into Submit. Below you have the option to add an icon. So from the icon library I add in an envelope icon. Now I start adding my two radio form fields. It's really easy. Click on the Add Item button. The for type is Radio. The label is Was this your first time at the restaurant? In the options, I input the two possible replies to get open-ended replies. Yes or no in two separated lines. Awesome! There it is! Now, for my second radio form field, I duplicate it by clicking on it. And now I just need to change the label into How did you hear about us? And in the option box, I enter the three possible answers so my users can pick up the correct choice. Internet, friends, and family are the choice. The form is too long, well, let's shorten. I click on the first ready form field and I enable the CSS inline list option. I do the same for my other radio form, so I click and I enable the CSN inline list option. Cool! I click on now on the plus icon to add a new element above. It will serve as a trigger element for the restaurant form. I added a new one column section and I drag in a bottom widget. This is for demo purpose, so nothing to worry about the design. I change the text into take our survey. I added the before icon from the icon library and I publish my changes. So select the bottom widget. In the advanced tab, we need to define a CSS ID to the bottom. It could be as a CSS ID or a CSS class. I go with the, I go with the CSS ID. I decided to use this mock word. I really don't know why. Anyway, that's not a problem. Believe me, this is not difficult. Just follow along the steps here and I apply and apply them whenever you need to. The only step now is to create the trigger mouse over event to connect the, to the section where the form is. So select the section, 
within the visibility, turn on the visibility option. Once you activate it, you immediately notice a red line on your right hand side within the Elementor Navigator involving the three elements. It means this section has dynamic visibility settings. Now we just need to tell which conditions we want to use, how they are activated and when to apply them. So, I activated the Keep HTML option. Basically, we are saying to keep the element in the DOM structure and hide this element via CSS rules. Below, you see the display mode. You got the options Show or Hide the Form Element. I set to show by clicking on the left button. We are setting the rule to display or to hide an element when the condition is triggered, which I talk to you about in a few moments. The logical connective is to determine how the conditions are combined. We are talking about logical operators. For example, if OR is selected, the condition is met when at least one condition is satisfied. If you use AND, all conditions must be satisfied. The tricks section below establish what determines the action item. We have a lot of categories to choose from, categories to choose from. Post user roles, dynamic text, di device browser, date and time, context, WooCommerce, if you have installed it, and much more. Each category, each category has its own different settings. To enable, you just need to delete all of them and then write down the trigger category. For me, I want to set an event type block. Keep in mind that to use the trigger events, you must enable first the Keep HTML option. I open up the events by expanding. We have three options blocks from this drop down list. Click, mouse over, and DBL click. I select the mouse over option as it's one under browser compatibility. Below, we have the trigger on this element. On this element. I type here hashtag mock to trigger the action. The connection between the two elements has been made and I publish. Let's preview on the front end. I leave the Elementor editor, I call it the Elementor Finder to switch page pages by pressing the Ctrl E shortcut. Refresh it. As I mouse over, the form is displayed at the front end. The mouse over trigger event has been applied. I mouse over once more and the form is hidden. Mission accomplished. The next example I provide you with is using the click to toggle event. Implement this in my service page. This is my service page, as you can see. It has this parallax effect on this section as you scroll down the page. What I want to implement on this parallax section is the following. I want to hide from my users. However, if the user clicks on the image section, However, if the user clicks, the image section will be displayed. Is the user event trigger? So I open the page within the Elementor editor. This button is the user event trigger. It's the action that caused the activation. Select it and head over to the advanced tab. Define a CSS ID. Remember, you can use a CSS class instead. I place here the CSS ID without the pound key. For me, it is best. Now select the image section by clicking on the six dots icon. Add over to the visibility tab and turn on the visibility. The keep HTML option is on as I still want to use the event trigger. To use the event trigger type, you must enable that option. The trigger is where I specify the event type. 
I go with the click event mode. Then on the trigger on this element, enter the same CSS, CSS ID with a hashtag. For me is hashtag best. And I also enable the toggle on option. Unpublish. Let's check it out. Scroll down the service page. The parallax image is hidden. Now I click on the bottom and let's check out what happens. Hey, hey, there you go. The parallax image is displayed. Awesome. I click once more on the bottom and the parallax image disappeared. It's hidden. Next example I want to present you is the following. We will be creating a dynamic generated welcome message on the home page. Being dynamically has great benefits. One of them is that you create it once and they are dynamically updated. I want to hide the message only from Firefox users. And up the home page on Elementor. I select this empty column. I will create a welcome message here. In the text editor widget, I delete the default placeholder text. I select now the dynamic text by clicking on this little dynamic icon. We will pull in from WordPress database. Inside there, I look up for a specific one. This list is very extensive as you are watching and you can use them to personalize your website. I select current date time. I click on this rent icon to configure the element. I pick up the date format and in the advanced tab you can further add more words. I defined in the before field today is and then I select the widget column and I align within the visibility tab, toggle on, display. the display mode is to hide. I turn on the logic connective. This is to check multiple conditions at once. For example, if you want to combine the OR logical operator or the AND logical operator, if you select the OR operator, it means that at least one condition must be met with the HAND operator. Instead, all conditions must be satisfied. Low in the triggers based on devices and browsers. I only want to use one trigger event. Below in the device and browser, I specify Firefox browser. Then the final step is to say the visibility action. I click on the hide option button and publish. Let's check now on the front end with the Chrome and Firefox web browsers. I'm noticing that the message text has no color. I must fix this quickly. I click on edit with Elementor at the top and then I select the text editor widget in style tab and I've changed the text color to white and updated. Checking now with the Chrome web browser. There it is, the welcome message. I select now the home page link and I copy it. I open up the Firefox browser now and I paste here the link. OK, as you are watching with the Firefox browser, the welcome message is hidden. I really hope you like this video. My honest opinion is that by using this combination of Elementor and dynamic content for Elementor, you can build up much more advanced websites, dynamically generated ones, and personalize them the way we need to. Let me know in the comments section if you use this. Thank you so much for watching.